everyone, welcome back to Slough's Finest. I'm Max and today I'm joined by the person that put the ball in the Kingsley net, Manny Williams. How are you doing, Manny? Yeah, it's not too bad, Paul. How are you? How are you? I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Um, how are you coping with this lockdown? Obviously, Slough playoffs are happening on the 19th of July, which is great. We'll talk more on that like playoff topic later, but like, how are you and family? Uh, yeah, we thank God, you know, um, family's all good, um, you know, I've been, in, I, I went into school earlier, part of lockdown, Yeah. and then obviously when it got a bit too much, um, you know, and uh, looking after some of the key work, children, um, you know, some of us teachers then started to take, you know, taking turns in terms of, um, yeah. on a rotational basis, um, but yeah, it's all, it's all, um, all good, all good, can't really complain, you know, one of the, one of the better ones, really, in terms of, you know, we're fortunate enough to be here to be having this conversation at the moment. Yeah. You know, so we've just got to count our blessings, really. Yep. Um, so we're going to start off with your professional career. Um, and obviously I've done my research and it, you've played for Notts County and Millwall. Oh, jeez, that, that was an ages ago. Just a pop. Yeah, that was, um, that was uh, through uh, development squad. So that was... Um, So, so obviously to play like in a development squad, you'll probably need to get scouted for it. So, what's your story and how you got scouted? Um, uh, so, I, I not too long after I started, um, I think college, I believe. Um, yeah. Sorry, no, just so just just before college, I played for my um, my county, Essex County. Yeah. And it was through Essex County that I. Um, scouted and made contact and um uh and it was also through playing for england school boys as well that yeah. was how i made contact and and went down there on on trials did okay and you know kept me on for, you know through the development squads but you know clearly didn't you know um prolong any further um hence why i had to obviously leave and, and go to Try my luck elsewhere. Yeah, so as you said, you're trying your luck elsewhere, and I've got a few non-league clubs that you you play for. You play for Concord Rangers. That's my first ever semi-pro club. Yes, yes, you first ever club. Not a lot of people know that, but um, I think I was. That was so. That was my after I left um, Junior Amers was the last one after I left them. Then I went. I started playing for um, Concord Rangers. Then you went to, well, this ain't in order, but you played for Yedin. Yeah, Yedin, great, great club. A great bunch of lads, uh, managers as well, the whole management team, you know, in terms of, you know, changing room, banter and camaraderie, probably one of the best clubs I've been at. You know, it was it, it was similar to Slav in terms of, you know, it was, it, it was yeah. a family club. Yeah, Yedin's yeah. just down the road from me. Ah, uh, there you go. So, um, I mean, I don't know how long you've been sort of uh, following football for, or whatever, and whether you follow Yedin, but that that squad up. So I joined Yedin just after DJ Campbell left. 
Oh. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I went in to replace DJ um, at Yedin. So you know um, Hayes and Yedin, obviously, Yedin and yes. e and Hayes came together and they obviously yes. made this bigger and better club, Hayes and Yedin. Um, do you feel it was the right move for Yedin or not? Um, I don't know, in all honesty, um, I, I don't think my opinion <laughs> really matters. Um, <laughs> but I mean, um, I know when I played for Yedin, you know, with Hayes being just around the corner, you know, whenever we yeah. sort of had games against Hayes, it was, a, you know, quite rightly said, it was a derby, or, you know, not, yeah. not, a, not a malicious derby, but um, I think the club the clubs needed to merge together from my understanding for um, financial reasons. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, I, I you know, it, 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 seems, it seems to be working. You know, so whether it was a right or a wrong decision, it's, you know, it's a decision that was made. And, um, you know, and Hayes and Yedin are uh, uh, sort of, you know, they're they doing quite well, aren't they? Yeah. Obviously, they got promoted last season to the level that Slough got promoted from, uh, to the National League South from. Um, and I think they're a club that we, if we don't go up this year, which I, I fully believe that we could go up, but, oh, absolutely. But absolutely. they they could be. About it. But say if we stay in this league for a couple more years, I think Hayes will be in this league. We'll we'll, we'll have a few games there. We'll have a local derby there. Um, I mean, uh, I, Hayes is you know certainly heading in the right direction, but so are we. So yeah. you know, hopefully we won't be having <laughs> the same games in the same it, leagues because they yeah. will get promoted, and so would we. You know. Um, yeah. So I'd I'd like to think that both clubs are progressing well. Um, and, you know, who knows where, where both clubs will be in a few years' time. Hayes, Hayes could meet us in the National League. Uh, again, they might not because we might have kicked on. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could, so, we could be in the EFL League too. There you go. Who knows? There you go. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ever the optimist anyway, you know. Um, yeah. I'm always, always seeing the, the positive sides of things. Um, so, I, I, I do believe that, you know, we, we will get promoted um and um what another <laughs> day or well, great celebration that would be eh? yeah <laughs> the only problem is like you i think obviously you're gonna get at least one person going to the game and just standing outside i, I like you get that with football i don't know if it will happen but there's always uh, that possibility i'm obviously not going to be traveling down there um <laughs> but you'll you'll probably at least get one just standing in the other park car park. Um, are you referring to oh to, to the, the Dartford um, home game? Yeah, the Dartford home game. Yeah, I mean you know it's it's um it's so tricky and difficult, isn't it? And, yeah. and um you know the fact that the you know the fans are not going to be at the ground during the playoffs or whatever else, but of course you know you're gonna have a couple of fans who who are going to want to be part of that and yeah. you know and it, even if it's you know by them being in the car park and seeing us in or you know or whatever it is that that you know they, they they probably will be but you know let's not forget that the game is going to be streamed live as well i believe um, yeah you know so i'm sure you know every, or every sort of rebel supporter will be at home you know with a pint or a bottle <laughs> um you know cheering cheering us on yeah and then finally, before you, um, you probably had one of your best spells in non-league at Maidenhead. Um, was it like thirty goals? Yeah, uh, oh, I think it was thirty-five max. Come on. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 think I it was have to keep it all up here. Sorry. I have to keep it all up here in my head, and I can't always remember. <laughs> That's okay. Um, no, I mean I went through you know spells in my career where um, I was in really good uh, form and my target was 15 goals by Christmas and you know I was aiming for 30 every year yeah you know this is in total and um, I think I went through a spell of maybe about five six years in a row where I hit you know that target I mean maybe not 30 in the league but you know 30 35 goals in total yeah and mean it just happened to be you know one of those years where I did hit um I think, yeah, 34, 35 in the league. And that was where I got my move to Woking. Yeah. Um, 
which which was which you know which was promising but yeah you know that that yeah i mean it was very very um very successful again it was the um johnson hip like also known as drax he you know he was the manager there and um he was the same manager at Yedin FC as well, so you know it yeah. was, um, and most of the players that were at Maiden and that I knew some of them in a way. Yeah. You know, so it was, you know, me fitting right in really. Um, um, but I really did enjoy my time at Maidenhead. Maidenhead, you know, so thanks to everyone who, you know, made my time successful there and who made it possible for me to get that move to Woking FC. Yes. Yeah, so then you went to Woking, and then you came to Hungerford Town. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Hungerford was, um, Hungerford was, oh, that's, this is, what, the last, I think, four, I was at Hungerford just before I signed for Slough, so, yeah. uh, what, what was that, about four years ago? Um, yeah, 2017, um, you done a loan move to Slough. Yes, so I, I did, was it a loan move to start with? It, I can't, I, I yeah, can't it was. remember now, oh, okay, so it was a loan move, and then, um, yeah, and then there was, and a, it was that, yeah. right, okay, um, yeah, I mean, Hungerford was, again, um, it was, I knew a couple of players at Hungerford, um, I was at Hampton, um, and that same year I was at Hampton and Richmond, so I signed for Hampton, and um, I, you know, I had Jamal Lowe in front of me, and Nick Bamber as well, who, you know, <laughs> at that time were, you know, just young, hungry, um, and we're playing every game, you know, so it was a, it was, it was a case of go to Hungerford, um, I know it's a bit of a distance, but, you know, get some game time and then, you know, just stay sharp, stay fit, you know, because I'm, as much as I love being part of a, you know, um, that's perfect, well, I'm, I'm as professional as they come really in terms of supporting the lads, even when I'm not playing, yeah. um, but my, I'm, I'm a footballer by trade, you know, and I, I, even at my age now, you know, I'd like to play every game, Yeah. you know, and, um, I felt like I needed to go somewhere to get some games and Bobby Wilkinson, um, you know, rang me, uh, wanted me to come down there to play some games for him. So I went down there on a short term basis and then um, I got a call from Bakes. Yeah. And, you know, to come down to Slough and I thought, perfect. You know, and that's a funny story, actually. I don't know if Bakes remembers this, but I think when I left Bates and stuff. So when I just left Bates and stuff, and I think it was when Slough just moved to Arbor Park, I, I gave Bates a call, you know, to come down. But I think at that time you had Charlie Moon. Yeah. Charlie Moon was playing up front for you guys, and um, and that was when Dunny and Smarty signed as well. And, yeah. You know, Bates just said, you know, he'd, he'd love to have me, but you know, in all fairness, they've got me and Doug who was doing well, yeah. and there was no space for me, so. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, I suppose it was Fates really, me being at Slough maybe a year or two years later. Yeah, so obviously you joined the Rebels in 2017, and then something in May happened, um, where it was in a place called King's Lynn. Where is that, sorry? King's Lynn. I did, Lynn. That. <laughs> I did, I got that. <laughs> yes, the famous King's Lynn, yes, yes. Oh. Um, uh, no, uh, I mean, obviously, I think it was the year before we went to Kings Lynn, and I'm sure, I'm sure we got beat quite badly, yeah. um, in, you know, and uh, I think we were, we were, I think we were 4-0 down at half time. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm pretty certain it was Kings Lynn, you know, so, um, we sort of, um, we, we needed to get one over on Kings Lynn, you know, and we yeah. knew that year as well, we knew Kings Lynn had played very, very well. Um, you know, and um, I mean, in so, some other clubs, but we knew that, you know, if we prepared correctly, we knew we were, you know, we were going to be triumphant on the day. Yeah. Um, and what, what, what a day that was. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that's definitely one of my, my career highlights um, in football. Sadly for me, uh, personally, I didn't get to go to the game. Um, oh, what a shame. I know. I can't, I, I cannot believe you were not there to to witness, you know, that moment and that day, you know. But the the day from start to finish, you know, I mean, for me it was a bit of sweet because I was a bit disappointed not to have started. Um, yeah. Obviously, Bates and Unders, you know, opted to go with Perry and Floody. Yeah. You know, but um, again, I I knew, um, you know, I was ready. Um, 
and I, I I was I hoped you know that I I got the opportunity to come in and make a difference and you know lo and behold it was written in the stars. <laughs> exactly. Um, sorry about my yawning. I'm, That's I'm, okay. I'm just, That's all right, no worries. I'm just totally. Um, and obviously, um, I've watched the game back so so many times during this lockdown just because I've been so bored. And then I just see Dobson whip the ball into you, you turn a player, and then I don't know if you turn another one, but then you put it in the Kingsley net, and and then, and then you just hear Aid go, Manny, Manny Williams! <laughs> I know, I've had, I've had words with Aids about that, to be honest. He was in that, he was in that got this all, um, the other song started, to be fair. But, um, yes, I mean, um, I've had to, I mean, I, I didn't do it immediately after the game, but maybe a, a couple of days after the game, I had to watch the, the video back. And I actually didn't realise at the time how late in the game it was. So I didn't realise yeah. that we were in the 89th minute. Um, I think if I'd realised, I would have probably gone a bit, um, you know, <laughs> erratic, really. But um, yeah, the the whole the whole um, the whole moment was surreal, you know. Um, yeah. It is is what players dream of, really, coming on and scoring the final in a, in, you know, sorry, the goal in a in a final to get the team promoted or you know win a trophy or whatever it is. So yeah. Um, yeah, it all, it all, it, you know, it all seemed to happen, um, happened as as I wanted, really. You know, the again that that ball from Dobbo, you know, I've, I've always teased him, you know, saying that it was a shot, um, but no, it was a great ball, and I sort of, yeah, I gambled, I, I guessed as to where, you know, it was going to be. If you have a look at the goal again, yeah, um, it was as as. I knew when he put his head down that he was going to try and whip the ball in, so I ran behind the defender to come in front. You know, as a youngster, you're always told to do two runs, you know, a way to come and receive a short or come short to go long. Yeah. You know, and it was that moment where I went behind the defender to then come short in front of him, double happy to put it in there. Yeah. My first touch really made the goal, you know, yeah. um, up, you know, controlled the ball and then chopped him on the inside and... Um, I spoke to Floody after I spoke, Floody was stood there, but there was no way I was going to pass that in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, connected very well with the ball, and you know, the rest as they say is history. Exactly. Now, you're you. I bet that I bet so many people um, said to their um, wife, girlfriend, "I want my baby to be named Manny," and then their <laughs> and then their wife were like. Why are you naming the kid Manny o o over a footballer? And then I bet most of the wives went like, "No way." <laughs> Do you know what? I would love, I would absolutely love to know if anybody has done that because that would be out of this world. Yeah. You know, but um, I, 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 I doubt it very much. But that would be that would be a great story, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Having a child being named after me and it's not my child. <laughs> um, brilliant. And I don't know if you've seen some of the questions that's been sent in through Twitter, um, but this one's from Trent Phillips. What is your favourite Chinese restaurant in Windsor? <laughs> Trent, you'll know. <laughs> um, no, that's just a bit of banter. We went out on a, on a team night out, um, and um, Trent and I ended up in some Chinese shop in Windsor. Now, I don't know if Trent wants me to say the rest, but I think I'll keep my mouth still. Um, <laughs> But it's uh, Trent. He knows the name of that restaurant. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain. I don't think he's welcome back in that restaurant. But Trent knows the name of it. Um, and obviously, um, um, I know you a little bit through my family, through my auntie, um, and obviously my cousin plays in the same football team as your boy. Yes. Um, would you like your children to follow in your footsteps? Um, I would love my children to be dedicated to whatever they decide to do. So I could have opted to be one of these pushy parents who pushes, especially, you know, my big one, uh, Micah. Yeah. Who, you know, he's, he's got, he's a, he's a very good talent. Um, good left foot, which is rare. Um, yeah. You know, um, so 
I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm not the pushy parent who wants their child to, you know, become a footballer and, and you know, train, you know, 15 times a week or whatever it is, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy for them to choose a career path and just be dedicated to it and I'll be supportive of, you know, whatever they want to do now. No, my younger one is getting into football now, but he's better with his hands, so any tennis, badminton, rounders, baseball, you know, so yeah. um, that's, he, that's that's his talent, really, his hand-eye coordination yeah. better than his footwork, you know, so we're looking when this all stops again to, you know, sign him up for a bit of tennis, yeah. to get some tennis coaching and, and see how far he goes. Now, obviously, in my case, the footballer by trade, really, you know, he yeah. loves football and he's always out in the garden and playing, so... Absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll support them in whatever they want to do, but it would be a dream if they both wanted to be a footballer. Um, clearly, play at a much higher level than I have played, you know, but, yeah. um, but I suppose bottom line is whatever they like, you know, whatever they choose, um, I would support them 100%. Um, so, what, like, how old was you when you got scouted? For... For your, your first, like, team? Um, when you say your first team, what do you mean? Like, uh, yeah, go on. like the development squad or, like, playing for Julia Hammer? Oh, um, I don't know, I'd probably say I was probably in maybe year 10 in school because I got scouted for Essex County first. Yeah. So I got scouted for Essex County first playing school football. Um, uh, I think it was, uh, what was the name of the school? Kelmscott, I think it was, we played, because um, I went to a school over in East London. Yeah. And uh, Patrick Adjaman played for the opposite team. Um, but I, I, I knew Patrick Adjaman, and um, the scout that came to, to watch Patrick Adjaman saw me and he was involved with the, the county, the, you know, county football. Yeah. And after the game, he, you know, came and spoke to me and um, asked me to, to come and, you know, try and represent the Essex County at, yeah. at school board level. You know, so I don't know, I'd probably say maybe year 10 was when I really got scouted. So about you know, 15, yeah. 15, 14. About, yeah, uh, about 40, yeah, about, yeah, about 14, 15, I'd say. Yeah, so older than me. <laughs> yeah, slightly. <laughs> um, um, this is a little bit of a would you rather here. Would you rather win a playoff final at, like, the worst ground with, like, maybe, like, 10 seats in a stand, no terracing, or would you rather play a semi-final at Wembley? say win the playoff final because then yeah. that's um, sort of the, the icing on the cake that you've been you know uh, baking for however months of the season isn't it so yes yeah. definitely um, win the playoff final even if there are no fans there and you know we're playing in a dodgy field somewhere definitely <laughs> win the playoff final who is your all time footballing legend oh um Got, I've got three which are all on par with each other, um, and it would be uh, JJ Okocha is somebody who yep. I, you know, words I can't describe how much I idolised him, um, and, and of course you've got Ronaldinho, um, again he was one of mine all the time, and uh, Ronaldo, the big Ronaldo, proper Ronaldo, not you know CR7. I'm yeah. talking R9 Ronaldo, it might be yeah. too young for the time. No, I, I, do, I do know who R9 is. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I, I, I suppose those three, I mean, in no, in no particular order, if, if, if there was an edge, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't decide between those three, in all honesty. Yeah, um, so obviously when Slough fans go away from home, we are very, very loud. Um, the best, the best in the league, can I add? You guys are, honestly, you know, we speak about the twelfth man. Um, unless you are, you know, a player for a club, you wouldn't understand how much that means to the players and the management team. 
yeah. having so much support behind the team, you know, even when the team is down. Um, and it hasn't always been the case, you know, I remember, you know, when I've been at Slough and Slough were one nil behind, you know, it's more subdued atmosphere, you know, until we score the goal and then, you know, it's louder again. But, yeah. you know, recently, over the last two years or so, honestly, the, the support from the Slough fans, it's it's second to none, you know, and it, it's very, very vital to the team. Um, and the, the both players and management and, you know, I urge, we urge you guys to continue, you know, because you guys yeah. are the, you know, 12th man that continue to push us. Right, um, just let's just talk about um, the Slough chance. You're probably the most luckiest because you've got the most Slough chance about you. Um, you got four, um, so you've got, do you want to try and guess them? Uh, uh, I think I can guess them, yes, the... the one I've had everywhere I've been so many, many. I've had that one, yeah. yes. Um, uh, Kingsley one, who put the ball in the Kingsley net. Yeah. I've had that one as well. Uh, um, the one AD is 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 a concrete for, uh, is 105. Yeah. <laughs> that one. And what's the fourth one? Uh, well, I don't know if I know the fourth one, actually. We, we, I think we've, we've only sang it a couple of times. I think it's like two world wars and a playoff win. Two world wars and a playoff win. Two world wars and a playoff win. So <laughs> no, Bo Manny that, Williams. That's, that's new to me. I've never heard that one. Oh, haven't you? <laughs> two world wars. That's quality. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, if you're the rage, 105. <laughs> clearly, yes, clearly. You know, um, no, I've, I've never heard that one. That's 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 news to me. Well, it, well, it's, it's, it's a good one. Whoever came up with it. Um, so now we've got a very, very good question from Freddie T. Hello, Freddie. Um, and what, Freddie? <laughs> do you think you'll end your career at Slough? I, when you say end your career, I don't see my career ending because even when I stop playing, you know, I intend to to kick, you know, push on to something else. So um, end my playing career at Slough, I would love nothing better than ending my playing career at Slough because I think um, for me it's a blessing really because um, you know being at Slough at my age and you know um, being at such a wonderful club uh, I would yes I, I would I would love to oh, I would love the opportunity to finish my playing career at Slough you know Bates and Unders um, and Trent as well, you know, they're, they're, they're all, they're all, I can't speak highly enough of those three um, yeah. as a management team. And then obviously we've got the two top wells, yeah. and Nisby, who are like, you know, skipper, coach type people, you know, who are very, very approachable and, and you know, you can talk to it. And then, and then all, you know, the rest of the boys, which I said earlier, yeah. um, are, you know, the, the club is... It's the the boys, you know. It's like it's almost like a family club, you know. Um, and 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 you know, me ending my career there it would, would be would be you know it would, would be amazing, it would be amazing. My playing career, man. Yeah, know, you're playing, um, you're playing career. Um, yes, but that's 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 not for for maybe the next three four years, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um. So before we move on to the last couple of questions, um. Mm -hmm. We've had a few memorable games as Slough fans. You've probably had a few memorable games on the pitch as well. And I think one that we can both agree on is Dorking away. Um, that was a great day. Do you know what? That was a great day. For me, again, that was one of those mixed feelings because I wasn't there. I was, um, I, I think I went to play a game for uh, Harrow Borough. Oh, um, yeah. And yes, I think I, I went to play a game for Harrow Borough. So as much as... I, you know, it's a great feeling, obviously, when I when I play for Haribara or, you know, when I'm not at a slab game or whatever, first thing I do after the game is, is ask players for the results or check my phone, you know, and see, seeing the result at, you know, a tough, tough ground to go to as well was was amazing. But obviously, you're not, you know, yeah. not being involved with it. It's, um, it's a mixed feeling, isn't it? Right, we'll say that's one of my favourite for me then. <laughs> And then, um, I don't know if you was in this squad, um, um, because I can't actually remember, but did you go to Welling away? To Welling away? Yeah. Uh, I believe, what was 
the score at winning away? Two one. Right. Robbo put in a penalty. Um, I don't think I was there either. Oh. Was that this year as well? Yeah, it was this season. I don't recall being there. I think the last, um, what was I? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall it, Max, I'm afraid. Oh. I don't recall being there again now. Oh, no, um, it was I, a great I atmosphere. I could tell you some of my favourite moments in the slouch shirt. Yeah. Um, my memorable moments, obviously, Kingsland being the, the, you know, top of the list. Um, the game where we were four 0 down as well, and then came back to win five. Merthyr away. Merthyr away. I mean, the first, the first, um, I don't know, thirty minutes of that game. I don't know what happened, but yeah. <laughs> you know, we 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 were we were um yeah we we, we were under it you know under the caution um yeah. But again, it goes to show the spirit of the Slough Town, you know, players. Um, yeah. Because we, even though we were four 0 down, you know, we, did, I, I, I think deep down, ninety nine percent of people wrote us out, you know. Um, but we, we believed in ourselves, and we continue to believe in ourselves. I'm pretty. And then came out second half and turning it around. So that was another one. Um, and I think. Uh, Gainsborough. Away. Gainsborough away again. That's another. That's another memorable moment because we yeah, we went into the game uh, being underdogs to everybody else, you know. But we knew what we were capable of again if we turned up. And I think if not, I think I know everybody turned up that game. And the support again from you guys, you know, was immense. Um, you know, and. For me, both my um, both my boys travelled down that day as well. What to Merthyr? Yes, uh, no, not Merthyr. Gainsborough. Gainsborough. Oh, yeah, Gainsborough. They travelled to Gainsborough. Um, you know, so just knowing that they were there as well and yeah. that result was was just you know was was, a, was an amazing feeling. So those three moments I'd say were probably the most memorable in a slouch shirt for me. Um, um before yeah. before we um, just go move on to the next question, um, I'm just going to talk about the Murph game quickly. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, like uh, after the game, but when we was four 0 down at half time, um, I'm pretty sure sure a Slough fan put a tenner on Slough Town to win, and, and I think he won like r loads of money. <laughs> Do you know what? I think a couple of people did that actually. Um, yeah. I believe that a couple of people did that. So at four 0 down, I think um, I can't remember who's. Uh, someone sent me like a, a, a receipt of, of somebody that they knew who put. Um, I, th I think it was about ten as well on the game at yeah. half time for Slav to come back and win five four, and obviously it was all like the news and everything else because it's one of those things that you know yeah. you don't hear happening in football. You know, so I mean, fair, fair, fair play to that slap fan. You know, um, he clearly got what he, he um, what he believed in. You know, put his money where his mouth is, as the saying goes. Yeah, paid for and, his petrol. You know, and he was rewarded handsomely for it. Yeah, he paid for his petrol down. Oh, clearly, clearly, <laughs> I think he, he's still paying for his petrol now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but it was brilliant. So. Um, let me just talk about winning away. Obviously, I don't want to make you a bit, you know, because you weren't there, but... No, 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 that's fine. Um, so we were standing behind the goal for second half, and then, like, we were standing behind the goal again, but it was it was a weird terrace. So then, mm -hmm. so we saw, like, a gap, like, just next to the dugouts in the stand. Yeah. So about 100, 150 of us travelled into that stand, and then security tried kicking us out. They tried, one security guard was trying to like talk to us, but every time he'd come to talk to us, all the Slough fans were singing. You guys started singing, of course, you yeah. had to drive him out. And, and then, but we, we was probably about so close to the dugout, like everyone could hear us, like the, the, even the management could hear us. They said it was like the loudest we've ever been. Oh, it's brilliant, it's brilliant, honestly. Um, I can't stress that enough. Yeah, and obviously, what a game. Check that out, guys, on my channel. Well in a way, dork in a way. They're all good videos. Go check them out right now. Oh, no, stay, watch this, and then you go after and watch, watch them. Um, 
So let's go for your favourite brown to play at. Favourite brown? Yeah. Um, is that a trick question? <laughs> it's got the Arbor Park, surely. Yeah. Yeah, surely Arbor Park. You know, again, the the whole the whole atmosphere, the family atmosphere, you know, makes it the supporters. Um, and they say best ground. Best grounds. Yeah. Um, so what's the best ground you've played at? And uh, but let's just say you can't say Arbor Park. Right. Um, is this uh, this year or? Oh, anywhere. It it, it doesn't have to be at Slough. Anywhere. It could be at Hungerford. It could be at. You might have played a game at for Junior Hammers. Um. Anyway, I'd probably say. Uh, between two, so I played a game at um, I played a game for England schoolboys at the Wiggins training ground. I can't remember what it's called now. It, yeah. Uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called. I think it, it might have been called. It, it, they were sponsored by a bank at the time. Um, but I, I, I mean, I, I can't recall. But you can do your research. Um, <laughs> but that ground was an absolute carpet to play on. And um, at uh, MK Don's pitch when they first, so the first year that it was completed, yeah. um, we had a game. I was at Maidenhead and we had a game against MK Don's in the, in the I think it was a County Cup. Cups Cups final. Cups, yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, so so we played there and the ground was obviously it's just been done. Um, you know, spanking condition um that was again that was brilliant and fratton park as well fratton park was another good ground yeah good ground to play on um actually does does playing a tournament at highbury count as yeah. much as i don't want to put oh, it on my, um, on my list manny yes. i'm just gonna say i'm an arsenal fan as well uh, uh, um okay um yeah so then probably highbury i'd say yeah thank you good good answer <laughs> great answer um so there's a game I forgot about. I was, I was going to mention it. It was the Burks and Bucks Cup final at Reading. Uh, no, at um, Bracknell. At Bracknell Town against Reading. And pretty much, I got given this slough shirt from you. Um, <laughs> and obviously, let me just show it. And it's been signed by Manny. Um, obviously, match worn, number 10 on the back. Um, yes, sponsors. I sponsors. And obviously, um, what do you think about that game? Um, that game was really tough. It was really tough for me because I was going through um, uh, such a yeah no. I, I, I was uh, you know I was, I was feeling very very down at the time because um, events happened yeah. to, you know, at the school I worked at. So for me, it was it was um, it was I, I had to show a lot of strength and character in that game. Yeah. Um, but I knew, I knew the purpose I was going into that game for, and um, you know, the, I mean, being slow again, you know, the management team, the the um, players, and everyone else, you know, rallied around and and made made that day possible for me, really, to honour what needed to be honoured that day, and you know, um, again, that that day for me was bittersweet, you know, um, obviously. Yeah what was happening at the time but then I had again my family was down there um I arranged so that Rice Rangers can come down yeah and be mascots for the day as well so my boy was down um and and it was a cup final as well you know so playing in it scoring you know and winning and winning the trophy doesn't really get much better actually you know apart from obviously the the sad moment yeah. In the game, but you know, it, it was it was a tribute. It was a tribute, and and I think I honoured it well. You know, um, the yeah. parents were were you know pleased and and you know they were happy about it, and I actually gave the medal to the parents as well. Oh. You know, so I didn't yes, so I didn't keep the medal. Um, the next the next time I went to school, I went round the house and I donated the medal to the parents. You know, which is still. You know, in the house to this day. Yeah, and obviously yeah, so that, from me, oh, from me. Thank you for the slouch shirt. Um, oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> very welcome. Um, I mean, obviously, again, uh, you know, I, I know you through um, your cousins and yeah, you know, um, aunts and 
months and everything else. So um, for me, it, it was it, it it was a shirt I wanted to keep, but you know, for me, if it would go and be more useful to someone else, um, you know, uh, clearly, you know, if, if you appreciated it more than I did, then you know, I'd, I'd always want to make someone else feel better. You know, so yeah. hence the reason I gave the shirt to you. Um, so I hope, I hope you're looking after it because <laughs> there's a lot of sweat to into it, that shirt. It <laughs> is. Um, it, it literally hangs up in my bedroom. I, I, I don't really, I don't really even touch it. To be totally honest with you. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Then, then, then I know you went to a good home. <laughs> um, basically, um, um, you've probably been thinking, why haven't I talked about this before? Because I've been saving it for this. How did it feel to put on the Sierra Leone shirt? A dream come true, a dream come true, not just for myself, but for my dad, my brothers, you know, my mum, my aunt, everyone in my family, really. Obviously, yeah. my boys were not born then, yeah. Yeah, um, but I was still, um, I, I was married to my wife at the time, I was teaching at the time, um, you know, so it, it, it was it was a, a, a dream come true, you know, it's, it's what every child Regardless of you know what country it is, whether it's a huge country or, or a small country, you know, if you're a footballer or a sports person, your ultimate dream is to represent your nation. Yeah. You know, and I just happen to have the 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 privilege the privilege to do that. So it was it was it was a you know dream come true. I've got the shirt. Um, you know, it's framed and and it will always be it'll always be part of my history, of course. Yeah. Um, who has been the best player you've played with, been on the pitch with? Oh, I think that's, that for me, for me, that's a very easy one. Uh, a player called David Clark. Okay. I was at um, Yedin with him, and then I was at Maidenhead with him as well. Um, we called him Clarky. Uh, you know, he, he, was, he played centre midfield. Yeah. And, um, and he's, he's one player that, you know, if I've ever seen a player not complicate the game but be as effective it, it would be him you know um, very very simple player in a way but you know he, he was the, the driving force behind the team you know he was a leader in midfield um, he would just break up the game and, and, and he, he knew his limits you know he didn't try for yeah. anything he didn't try to do anything spectacular um, you know I, I, I was watching an interview with Wayne Rooney and they asked him he was a best player he played with and the best striker sorry and he said Hemel Hesky because he didn't complicate things he knew what he was good at and he maximised that and it was the same with you know David Clark so yes David yeah. Clark by a, by a long shot now we're moving in to the quick fire questions um, okay. um, so I'm not going to talk a lot Twitter or Instagram sorry Twitter or Instagram Twitter or Instagram? Yeah. Oh, uh, Twitter. Okay. Football, <laughs> football or teaching? Oh, um, oh, uh, uh, football. <laughs> because you can teach through football as well. Yeah. Um, Sweet Caroline or Wonderwall? Yes, thank God. Um, <laughs> was you at the presentation night? Yeah, you was. You sang. Um, so. You sang Hey Jude. So. You sang Hey Jude. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Do you remember? Do you, do you recall Ben Harris's Sweet Caroline? Uh, uh, vaguely, vaguely, you know. But Ben, Ben's uh, absolutely, uh, yeah, love, love, love that guy. Yeah. You know, he's um, he's very special, very special person. Tea or coffee? Yes. And finally, bakes or unders? Uh, unders. <laughs> <laughs> good, good answer. Um, no, I couldn't, I couldn't choose between the two, you know. Um, they're, 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 both, they're both equal in my eyes. Yeah. Um, even though the boys like to banter them, but um, for me, they're, they're, both, they're both top, 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 top guys. And I would never choose between the two of them. And it's got to the point now where... I'm out of questions. I've got no to ask you, so it's time for you to ask the host. Um, so, what question would you like to ask me? 
Slough Town Vlogs. I've been Max. This has been Manny Williams, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.